Folks, hi. Very good morning, um, good afternoon, good evening, depending on uh, when you're tuning in, whether it's live now on uh, on LinkedIn or here on Zoom, uh, or indeed uh, whether you're listening back to one of our uh, one of our recordings or podcasts later on. Uh, my name is Rob McGee. I'm the CEO at Ingenio. Delighted to be here this morning. Jack, can you can you hear us and see us? Okay. I can indeed. Good morning, all. Um, so I, I'm the uh, head of the technology recruitment team over at Ingenio Global in Dublin. Um, so yeah, I can see you all. Looking forward to this morning. Great, Jack. Delighted to be to be uh, on with you. And this is obviously the first time that you and I have done one of these live. I know you were on uh, when I was away on holidays a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, but delighted to be doing this with you live. Um, so, so folks, a um, bit of an introduction here. Uh, Jack and I are here to talk to you uh, today and and uh, really, I guess, with a, with a very specific remit of help. We're trying to help people who are in the job, uh, in the job hunt process, whether that's starting out, whether that's consideration, whether that's kind of CV creation phase, we're going to be talking today. Uh, we're going to be talking today around uh, some very particular kind of techniques in and around the interview. Some really, really high value techniques in and around the interview base uh, in, in the interview space. Uh, and look, why do we do this? We do this for 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 two reasons. Um, Ingenio is is two business it, two businesses. It is as Jack has already said there. Uh, first and foremost, a recruitment business that helps. Uh, technology, software, and SaaS organizations grow and scale. So we've got nearly seven years worth of experience uh, on that side of things. And we have a second business called Ingenio Learning, which was built uh, or which was launched last year and built very specifically to help people like you get hired by those types of organizations. And we've developed uh, a range of courses and products um, that people can can effectively consume and use that that really helps accelerate that whole piece on. We are talking uh, over the course of the month of July. We've been talking around uh, a couple of really high value topics, and what we're talking about today is um, winning answers to common interview questions. Um, and you'll be, I guess, leaning on Jack and I, and and certainly our experience in this space uh, to be hopefully to be hopefully able to get some real kind of value and some very particular assistance with potentially some areas that you might be stuck or struggling uh, or just need a bit of a refresh on um, the sessions that we've already done for july uh, you have you can get access to them so give us a shout out in the in the chat box uh, if you want to get access to any of those recordings that you maybe have maybe previously missed and definitely don't miss next week, right? We're going to be talking about answering those um, those really testy, challenging uh, conflict interview questions that a lot of people uh, really struggle with, and it kind of knocks them off their uh, off their game. So before we get into uh, before we get into these these kind of very particular types of questions. What I wanted to do to maybe set the scene, and and this is something that I talk about loads and loads both to candidates and are not not just me obviously but the whole team but we talk about this with candidates when we're preparing them for interview but really importantly in our course at Ingenio Learning there are four key sections to a really successful interview and if these sections don't happen uh, not necessarily in the order that they're listed in here but if they don't happen um, you can be guaranteed that the, the, the interview has not been as successful from your side and indeed from the interviewer side as you would like it to be. The first section in an interview is, is letting the client go first, right? Um, so that's not you being dominant and just launching straight in. It's letting the client go first. It's getting them to talk about themselves, their role, their team. If they're a hiring manager, what they're, what they're looking for getting them to provide an insight into the organization and the company, the cultures, the values, and, and letting them in their own words, give you a, an assessment of what it is that they're looking for. And the beauty about make, paying real attention to that piece is capturing words, phrases, terms that they're using, capturing it, writing it down if needs be, and replaying that back and using it as, as, as part of your, as, as the interview develops. 
Second section is the you story. This is three to five minutes long. It needs to be chronological in the sense of it starts with what you're doing right now. Don't start back 10, 15 years in term, uh, ago in terms of what you did at school or university. These guys are hiring you for what you're doing right now today. So it's really, really important that you've got a very, very strong you story that talks about you know, what you're doing, what you've done, the relevancy of what you've done, um, uh, you know, key attributes, um, and a little bit of stuff about personal and then why it is that you are actually interviewing for this organization, why you're talking to them today. Really, really important. And, and we do a whole section on this in the Ingenio Learning course. This is something that we always recommend that you, you video, uh, you record it on your phone and you get absolutely nailed on, nailed up. And, and, and as I always say in those, uh, in, in these sessions, I'm happy to go and have a look at and critique and comment on your you story if you want to go and send them to us afterwards. Uh, the next section is the two-way Q&A. So this is where they're going to ask you questions. We're, Jack and I are going to cover this now shortly. And more importantly, where you're going to ask them questions. And, and again, we've got a whole section of that on the course, right? But two-way Q&A, you need to be prepared for that. Competency-based stuff, role-based stuff, uh, culture, value, personality, uh, and then really importantly, then what are the positive, curious questions that you are going to go and ask uh, to really wow and impress the person or the people that are interviewing you? And lastly, feedback, actions, and close. So, so you need to uh, you need to get to a level of control in the interview, despite the fact that it's not your interview. You're not sharing it. There needs to be an element of control. Um, and, and again, you know, you need to be checking in with the interviewer or the panel as to how have you done? Are you the right type of individual? Is there a fit? Is there a connect? Do they have any concerns or reservations? And really, really importantly, what are the next steps and associated timelines? Uh, and as I said, those that whole piece and those sections on their own, we cover a whole piece on them. But I wanted to just talk about the interview itself because when we now launch into the questions, um, this will hopefully make a lot more sense, okay? Um, Jack, I, I guess maybe to, to give me a little break here and to get you to kind of come in here. Yeah. You know, when you think about your clients, um, you know, in the, in, the, in the software development, in the engineering space, mm. What, what are the kind of what are the questions here that kind of stand out for you and what kind of advice would you be giving people in terms of responding to them or, or maybe helping them prepare to answer these types of questions? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think in the engineering space in particular, uh, one of the key questions posed in an interview um, is to is to really try and qualify the candidate understands the software development life cycle. Um, and I think it's important that each candidate that performs the interview has a real good grasp of what that life cycle looks like through their experience to date. Um, so you need to be touching on things like analysis of the software. Um, so this, of course, is performed uh, in order to make sure that there are any adjustments really uh, needed before you go into the design phase. The design phase is pretty much the architecture um, so it's, it's taking those steps to build the architecture of the project. Um, following on from that, we move into the development life cycle. So this is where the, the software developers start the actual software development process. Yeah. Um, and, you know, beyond that, then once the, once the, the code is, is in place, we move forward to testing. Um, and that's, that's critical really to ensure that there are no errors. Um, and then if there are, let's document those bugs. Um, so we've got that uh, as a track record moving forward. Um, beyond testing, then we move into the implementation phase. Um, again, a crucial stage for running, uh, running the implementation through and ensuring that the, 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 that the software fits in with the, the I guess, the existing architecture. Um, and then beyond that, we move into maintenance. So the software is implemented, it's live, and then we have application analysts, application support analysts that are able to, to maintain that code. So I think candidates 
what, what I've noticed from software dev managers, they do like to make sure that the candidates have a full grasp of, of what that life cycle looks like. Um, it's impossible to just sort of go in into a role and, uh, and create software that is fit for implementation within the space of a week. There are certain procedures you need to follow. Um, yeah. and, and in today's sort of at, at, at an enterprise level, you need to have, as I say, um, a good handle on on that life cycle to ensure that you'd be a good fit for the team because you understand the procedures that you need to follow. Gotcha. So, so, so I guess taking, taking that and, and obviously look for people tuning in, right. Who maybe aren't in the software development or engineering space, you know, maybe who are a bit more broad or are maybe yeah. other, like, you, you know, I, I think there's probably two things that I wanted to ask you. Right. So, so if you think about, the questions that are here on the screen, right? These they're very generic, right? They're they're role generic, and um, they're not role specific. And then I guess what you're talking to, maybe we'll come on to that in a little bit, is there are there are a load of questions that are going to get asked to, you know, a marketing executive or a software developer or whatever. How how would you recommend or how would how do you advise your candidates to go and answer these kind of generic common interview questions? Okay. Um, look, I think a candidate in an interview needs to be able to capture the journey that the business is going on over the next sort of 12, 18, 24 months. Um, and there needs to be synergies there, perhaps with what skills you've got, your expertise, and how you can effectively add value to the business in terms of the journey they're going on. Yeah. Um, so you need to be able to identify what challenges the business face and what is the what, what's the the main motivation for bringing these expertise in-house on a permanent or contractual basis. And then you need to be able to articulate why you'd be a good fit for that business. Um, I think that, that that's the most crucial aspect. I mean, you might be, you might love the company. There might be in terms of their values and morals, they might resonate with you. Yeah. But effectively, um, you need to be able to add value to the client, uh, hence why they're paying you a salary. So in order to get to that point, I think you have to be able to articulate why you, in terms of what you can do, um, you know, to, to bring success to the team and, and to obviously try and um, support them on the journey that they face in terms of the challenges that they've got in front of them. Gotcha. Yeah, listen, that's great advice. I, I think if I might add a little bit to this, right, I, I think, look, there are, what, there's five questions there. They're, they're again, they're common ones, right? And I think... Very clearly, you know, very clearly, Jack and I, you know, if 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 we were if we were coaching you for a very particular job uh, in a very particular type of organization in a particular niche industry or whatever the case may be, you know, like it's very, very hard for us, I guess, on this call to be able to say, here is the perfect answer to tell me a bit, tell me, you know, to the question of what are your biggest strengths and weaknesses? And I think the key thing there is ex is to take exactly what Jack has said, right? You need to talk, you need to have your research done on the client, okay? So, you know, what do they do in detail? You know, who are their customers? Who are their competitors? Um, how do they make money? What's their business model? Again, if we think about our clients, they're all tech, software, and SaaS organizations. Are they product orientated so are they software orientated are they maybe hardware orientated uh are they both or do, is there uh, is there uh, services attached to that and so if you think about that if you can deconstruct their business and understand how they operate what their business model is what their go-to-market is how they make money you know, and then thinking about the things that Jack has said there around kind of beliefs, values, culture, uh, I guess, drivers, motivations, that type of stuff. When you've got that level of, of really strong base research done, answering these questions relative to yourself becomes a whole heap easier were you to, were you to not have done that research. Um, so, so look, I think that's very, very important. I think the other thing that I would be saying to you is in an interview, what everyone is looking for, um, and, and don't forget, right, an interviewer brings you, invites you to an interview because they want, they want you to be the individual that they're going to hire, okay? You're not being invited to interview 
uh, just to make up the numbers, despite the fact that maybe you kind of think that, uh, because it would simply be a waste of their time. So, so they are willing you, they are absolutely willing you on to, to, to you know, provide really good answers. And the point I'm trying to make here is that what I want you to go and do here, and, and my advice and certainly Jack's advice here, like you need to make impact with your answers to these questions, okay? Yeah. So why should we hire you? Well, look, you know, and, and I think maybe if we kind of take that one on its own, why should we hire you? Well, I've been working with X organization for, you know, three years. I have been delivering X, Y, and Z in terms of my role as a software developer or a business analyst. We've been working with the following technologies which relate to the stack that you guys are working in. All of the research that I've done around your people and your teams and your beliefs, I believe I fit all of these pieces. And look, I think I'm going to be able to have demonstrable impact in whatever role it is by doing X, Y, and Z over the first week, month, three months of my time at your business. And, and what we're trying to say to you there is, we like that impact, right? That real bang in terms of how you answer that question is exactly what these guys want you to go and say. So if you answer it in a weak, meek, mild, watered down version, then very clearly you're not going to get where these go, where you want and, and certainly where these guys want. Jack, anything to add on that before we move on? I, no, I, I agree entirely. I, I think, look, if the client are interviewing five to 10 candidates for a particular role, how do you stand out against your competition? And what you've just described there in terms of deconstructing their business and understanding what challenges they face um, uh, and, the, and I guess your expertise and how you can add value is going to help you during that interview process to stand out against the other several candidates that they're engaging with at the time. Um, and that is how you're going to leave lasting impact when, when answering that particular question. Yeah, big time. Last thing before we move on, and I'm going to actually just, I'm going to toggle back, right? Just really, really quickly to the previous slide, okay? And, and this is why I think understanding the interview is so unbelievably important, right? If you get the you story absolutely right, okay, if you yeah. get that story, the, 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 the three to five minute story about you, if you get that absolutely right, where it's, it's, uh, it's sequential, it makes sense, it's well structured, it has impact really importantly, and, and then where you bring things right up to now, what you end up almost doing naturally as part of telling that story really well is answering a lot of these questions that are going to come at you anyway. Okay. Now, if you can take, if you can take these common questions kind of off the table as part of telling a really good you story and then get into some really interesting meaty questions in the two way Q and a, then all of a sudden from a psychology, from an interview psychology perspective, you've got the upper hand uh, and, and you're definitely really well positioned versus maybe someone who maybe spends a bit too much time answering these types of questions. So, so look, <clears throat> that for us, that when we're, again, when we're advising people, that for us is one of the key reasons why making, having that structure and doing it that way makes so much sense. Um, Jack, you, you, yeah. You spoke, uh, again, we want to give specific examples almost here to people, right? You spoke about that life cycle. So, like, again, if you think about, if you're, you know, let's, let's say there's a couple of budding software developers and engineers here on the, on the line. Like, what are the types of questions that they, that, that they need to start kind of preparing themselves to answer based around that life cycle that you've brilliantly um, kind of articulated? Look, I think in any um, software development lifecycle, there's always issues to be had. Um, and I think the candidate needs to be able to understand potentially the problems that they've faced on certain life cycles in the past. Um, what were the challenges and how did they overcome the challenges? I think any developer on this call now will say that they've been involved on a project where it didn't 
entirely go according to plan. Yeah. Um, and it's about being able to um, acknowledge that. Um, and I think critically, it's about how did you overcome it? How did you pull together as a team? What were the issues? Um, and how did you overcome those in order to resolve it? So um, I think that's key. It's yeah. how did the project fail? What were the reasons behind it failing? And what did you do to try and resolve it? Um, yeah. And of course, to be able to articulate what the problems that you faced in previous projects as well, because I don't think there's any developer who'd be on the call, as I said, that would be, you know, just straight through to, uh, to, to implementation without any challenges that they faced. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, so the prep there is problems, challenges, uh, projects going awry, like maybe what was the impact i think maybe that that if, if they if they were able to kind of articulate that if they could detail out the impact of the problem so like a delay in a project basically meant that we were four weeks off going live sales team couldn't go and sell the product people are kicking and screaming and you know all hell's breaking loose and here's what we did is that the kind of stuff that you're talking about absolutely yeah i think um i think that's key because you know, uh, the, the developers that I place, yeah. when we go into interview and we, we get the feedback from the candidate, naturally they, they end up discussing about their career to date, the jobs they've worked in. But more importantly, as a developer, it's what you've achieved. It's the projects that you've worked on and what did you learn from those projects? Because, you know, they, they want candidates at that sort of um, experience level where they're going to come into a new team and there will be new challenges that's, that, that, that lie ahead but it's how you in the past have overcome those challenges that make you a good fit for that team and for that software development manager yeah yeah brilliant I, i'm going to chuck in a couple for, i guess from my my area of expertise which is i guess sales commercial maybe you might pull marketing in this one but l let me just kind of keep it specific to sales right so so the types of questions that are going to come at you um, that are very, very specific. I would be saying, well, the very first thing is clearly it's a sales role, it's a revenue role. So you need to be able to talk about, or you need to be able to answer questions about your targets, your quota. Um, you need to be able to do that in two ways. Firstly, in terms of, I guess, a, a dollar number or a euro number or a sterling number. And the second then is in terms of percentage against delivery, uh, you know, percentage against target, right? So, so really, really important that you, 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 you kind of nail that bit. The second thing then is from a sales perspective, well, look, your job is either to go and win new clients or service existing ones. So talk about the clients or the prospects that you've been working with, um, you know, in terms of segmentation, in terms of size, in terms of who are the types, uh, what, who are the types of individuals that you are selling to? What's their title? You know, were you selling to individuals on their own? Are you selling to teams? Um, is it is it is it a strategic sale? Is it a tactical purchase? You know, and that's really really important. And um, the next thing then that people absolutely love hearing about is an explanation of the deal. You know, so maybe saying, look, this is how it originated. This is where the initial lead came from. You know, from an inbound marketing request or inquiry, and. You know, the, 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 the SDR, BDR team took it on. They ran with it. Uh, you know, this is how we engaged with the customer. Here's where, here was the time scales. These were our competitors. These are some of the, going back to what Jack has just said, this is where, you know, these are the challenges and issues and problems that we had in terms of getting the deal over the line. So things like that, a real detailed explanation of the deal, if you like. And then lastly, from it, from, and again, this doesn't, this isn't specific to sales, right? This is every single individual. But, but you know, what are your motivations? You know, and I think, but I think a sales guy's motivation might be very, very different from a software developer's motivation and absolutely is going to be di very different again from someone who works in, in the finance function or the marketing function uh, or indeed some kind of admin or HR role or whatever the case may be. So, so, that's really, really important. And, and, and so look, what I'm trying to get you to go and do there is, uh, and I think what Jack is saying is, is actually telling a better story. Yeah. Removes in some instances, the requirement for the interviewer 
to ask a bloody difficult question. <laughs> you know, so 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 what we and what Jack and I are saying is that by really researching and prepping, and by being able to tell a very concise, you know, impacting, relevant story, the questions then become a lot easier. Um, and I think that's really really important for any anyone going into an interview, whether whether you've no experience or whether you've got loads of, loads of experience. Um, folks, I'm conscious there's a good few, and I'm conscious of time, I'm conscious there's a good few questions coming in, right? So I want to take those questions, uh, and Jack uh, and I will, will take them live. So, so look, please, 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 uh, happy to answer whatever question you have on whatever topic, whatever your background, whatever your role is. It doesn't need to be on sales or, or engineering. If it's related to interview questions, we're happy to go and take them. Um, but look, as, just as we move to that, really, really quickly, in Genio Learning, 90% of our students get hired in 90 days. That is a fact. It's a stat that we are unbelievably proud of as a business. Um, this is what some of our students and our, and our clients and previous course takers have taken. And, and again, the point I want to make here is not what specifically what they're saying, but the backgrounds and the ranges of experiences, the ages, uh, the profiles of these individuals are all completely different. And hopefully that, some of that resonates with you. These are the types of organizations that we will help you get hired in and by. Uh, and again, we are really, really proud to be working with some of the very, very largest tech and software organizations and indeed some very small growing uh, clients. There's a client there <clears throat> you might have seen on our, on our social media feed this week, a client of ours called Extreme Push. Really, really proud to see them raise 30 over 30 million dollars this week to fund global growth and expansion and again they're the types of organizations that we're working with we can help get you into um special promo pricing for anyone who's tuned in live today so it's 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 a pretty significant discount off our course price uh, and the question i want to ask you is what does 30 euros mean to you uh, in terms of a course purchase what does that mean to you in terms of landing that dream job in terms of working in that client organization that, that you're kind of really dreaming and obsessing about. I think that's really, really important. Um, lastly, we also have a personal uh, one-to-one -one coaching course that we offer to people who are going into interviews who want confidence, structure, prep, uh, practice, prep, whatever the case may be.